Heart to Heart Catholic Media Ministry presents Ornaments of Grace, stories for Advent and Christmas. Today's Ornament of Grace for Tuesday of the third week of Advent is St. Elizabeth Hesselblad. From the Gospel of Luke. Then when Zachariah's time of priestly service was over, he went home. Afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. She went into seclusion for five months, saying, In these days the Lord is acting on my behalf. He has seen fit to remove my reproach among men. We know from today's Gospel that Elizabeth, trusting in the Lord to come to her aid, became pregnant in her old age. Her trust brought us John the Baptist, who pointed the way to Jesus. Saint Elizabeth Hesselblad also trusted God. She did not bear a son named John, but she herself was fruitful in pointing the way to the Savior for many. Born in 1870 to Lutheran parents in Sweden, Elizabeth Hesselblad was the fifth of 13 children. By the time she was 16, she had to go to work to help support the family. Emigrating to the United States in 1888, she studied nursing in New York City and provided home health care to many of the poor. Some of those she served were Catholic, and they influenced Elizabeth profoundly. Elizabeth gave herself to prayer and study, wanting to know and follow the Lord's plans for her. So, it was with joy on the Feast of the Assumption, 1902, that she embraced the Catholic faith. Later, reflecting on her conversion, she wrote, In an instant, the love of God was poured over me. I understood that I could respond to that love only through sacrifice and a love prepared to suffer for His glory and for the Church. Without hesitation, I offered him my life and my will to follow him on the way of the cross. A short time after her conversion, Elizabeth left for Europe, where she made a pilgrimage to Rome. There she visited the house of Bridget of Sweden, then a Carmelite monastery. She wanted to join the Carmelites in Rome, but her health was, was not good due to her care for the sick poor in New York City. The order felt the life would be too difficult for her, but they welcomed her as a guest on probation. Elizabeth fell critically ill there, so she could not join the Carmelites. Still, feeling called to religious life, she asked the Pope to allow her to make vows under the rule of the order St. Bridget had founded. She professed her vows to her Jesuit spiritual director in 1906. Elizabeth, knowing the order was strong in Sweden prior to the Protestant Reformation, wanted to bring it back to life. She was unsuccessful in that attempt, but proposed a new order dedicated to the care of the sick. By the end of 1911, three women had joined her to pray and work. The order grew, and Elizabeth continued caring for the sick poor. In 1928, the Carmelites left their monastery in Rome, and Elizabeth's new order of Brigentines moved in, establishing a foundation in Rome. The Germans occupied Italy in 1943, sending many Jews to Auschwitz. A Jewish family of 12 roamed the countryside for some months before eventually returning to Rome. Friends suggested they take refuge in the Brigentine Monastery. Elizabeth and her community welcomed them, risking their lives. The Jewish family was able to hide in the monastery for six months until they could safely leave after the liberation of Italy in 1944. Like nursing the sick, Elizabeth offered her life for all her brothers and sisters. 
Elizabeth became quite ill on April 23, 1957. She raised her hands to bless her sisters, saying, Go to heaven with hands full of love and virtues. She received the sacraments and died early the next morning. Pope Francis canonized her in 2016. St. Elizabeth Hesselblad is today's ornament of grace. Observing the beautiful ornaments. How can we reach out and provide safety for the poor, the sick, and those whom society has cast aside?